because you were like, no, I'm fine. I was like, this is not normal. Like you, sh this isn't how you should have to live your life. And so we started tracking it and yeah, we started cutting those things out and you haven't had one and I don't even know. We stopped tracking because they stopped happening as frequently. Welcome to Velvet Ventures, where we talk about life, marriage, and the pursuit of entrepreneurship. I'm Ben. And I'm Channing. Business Health Market, better known as BHM, isn't your typical insurance broker. They're the rebels of health insurance. They're not here to sell you insurance. They're here to revolutionize the way small businesses approach employee benefits. As fierce advocates, they're committed to transparency, empowerment, and crafting tailored solutions that fit your unique needs. BHM offers a range of services. They're not just brokers, they're partners in your journey to business success. For more information, there's a link below this episode. So we're gonna talk today about our crunchiness. <laughs> Today's episode is literally named Crunchy Choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and how we snuck them into our lives. Because I don't think either one of us is a you know, what we would make fun of before as being crunchy people. Right. But I think the more that education has gotten out there and just awareness. Right. And I think that, you know, we as humans, we go full cycle or full circle in life because, you know, we probably made fun of our parents for using a coupon. And then now we're sitting there like, ooh, is it, yeah, a coupon? <laughs> you know, and I think that as you get older, you start to value some of those things. And so, for me... What is crunchiness? So, well, I think our biggest thing is getting some of the chemicals out of our lives. You know, and that is... Not including Diet Arts Pepper. <laughs> yeah. Not getting rid of <laughs> chemicals. Some chemical. I think it started with Red 40. Yeah. Food dye. That's what kind of started all of this. Because... I was watching a doctor and professor who was talking about the effects of on children mm -hmm. and noticing and dealing with some behavioral stuff with the kids and stuff and, and seeing like, man, what is going on? And I think when you couple that with the lack or less activity than there was, you know, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know what I was necessarily like as a kid. Mm -hmm. I know I ate Red 40, you know, whenever I was a kid, but we also didn't have, you know, tablets and TVs and and whatnot. Like, I mean, we had a TV, but it was connected to an antenna and you got three channels. And so 90% yeah. of the time there was nothing on. Yeah. And so, and we just weren't allowed to watch TV like that. And so we were just outside playing. So I don't, I don't think it had as big of an effect because we were just running it, literally running it out of our systems. Yeah. And so you start coupling like, Okay, well, you can't keep just like eating 10,000 calories a day. Like if you're in high intensity sports, like you can totally eat 10,000 calories a day and be okay. Right. And some should. Right. But then it's like you can't keep, I mean, you look at all the, you know, a ton of professional athletes. They are so used to consuming this many calories and stuff. And then within a couple of years of them stopping playing whatever their sport is, like they are going through a weight loss transformation or they're realizing that they're doing this because their body was so used to burning so much fuel and now they're not having to. Mm -hmm. And so I think the realization that was, okay, the kids can't keep doing the same thing and, um, and, and it's not going to affect them like it maybe didn't us or I didn't notice it as much or, or whatnot. And so, and every kid's well, I think different. it's just a, the chemicals are a little more prevalent now than they were in our food sources when we were kids. Sure. Like not by a whole, you know, not well, we don't know. leaps like, and bounds, right. I don't think, but. Because we didn't pay um, attention back then. <laughs> right. Well, and there wasn't science, you know, if there was a kid that acted out, it's just that was a bad kid. Right. It was never looked at like, well, maybe Red 40 is making this child angry. Right. Or having big emotions because it's playing with the hormones. Right. Inside and in literally the brain chemicals inside of the kid. It was never like, maybe they shouldn't eat fruit roll-ups, right. you know. <laughs> well, I think too, you know, the other thing is that when you, I mean, again, it's just such a vast topic. But, you know, Red 40 may not have been as big a deal, but now it's like, well, now you're ingesting Red 40, 
And 20 years ago, it wasn't as big of a deal because there wasn't this other chemical that's now also being ingested. And now these two are yeah, the reacting. And then it's making a worse effect. Yeah. And so I think it's just that whole amalgamation of all these chemicals. Because it's mm-hmm. not just like, this one is the devil. Right. But, you know, you take seed oils and the inflammation that they cause and all this stuff. And it's like, well, seed oils haven't been around that long. I mean, some versions probably have and some bun will probably say, well, they've been around since this date. I did not do research. Mm. But they have not been around forever. Like, I don't recall ever seeing, you know, um, you know avocado oil. Or rap seed oil or grape seed oils or all these things when I was younger. Like, they weren't as prevalent Mm -hmm. and readily available to my knowledge. Yeah. And so, but now it's just like with anything, like, now there's been a time period where people have now been able to study and see the long-term effects Mm -hmm. of these things. And so... So what is, what are some of the, like, diet decisions that we've made that are crunchy? I mean, number one, we shop at Aldi's a whole lot more. Yeah, and we shop there because if as long as it's their brand because they're a German company, their government just doesn't allow them to use Red 40. Right. So you don't even have to read the label and see necessarily. Yeah, it's paprika that's coloring right. the Cheetos, not. Yeah, it uses, yeah, they use different things. They use beetroot powder or they use yeah. paprika or what Naturally occurring right. things. Yeah, and it's, and it's more just about. One, they have interesting things there, so I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But two, yeah, it's like you can just know that I can go in there and pick up anything that is their German brand. Yeah. And I don't have to think about, like, read through the ingredients. And typically, like, when you look at, you know, a chip or a, a name it, if you just go to, like, Walmart and buy it, you know, there may be 40 ingredients on there. Right. And you go to theirs, and, and it's not that it's theirs is perfect, but theirs has, you know, there's 14 ingredients, and there's still some stuff in there that I'm like, I would rather not ingest, but it's not that bad mm-hmm. comparatively. Does it taste the same? No. But again, that's where, you know, the government, science, the, you know, companies and stuff are like, we don't care what it does as long as it tastes good, and how can we make it addicting? Mm-hmm. You know, because then we'll sell more. Right. And that's okay. And th- I say it's okay. It's not okay. But it's once you can understand that everything is a business, then you understand their reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to make it taste the best that they can and last the longest that it can because they want to sell you more. Mm -hmm. And and I hate saying it, but I'm like, it is what it is, Mm -hmm. you know. And until they put more regulations on it. Nothing's going to change mm-hmm. because when there's money to be made, you're not going to turn their heads. Um, but diet wise, yes, anything with red 40, we try to eliminate or drastically reduce. Mm-hmm. Um, we try not to keep a whole lot of like processed snacks or processed foods. Like for the most part, the thing that we consume the most that is the most processed is like corn tortilla chips. Mm-hmm. Um on a regular basis. Outside of that, it's like we don't keep a lot of chips in the house. We don't keep, you know, really candies and, and stuff that's just like readily available. Um, we don't. And we, typically we hide our candies. Yeah. Like I, I wanted some salted caramels and I have like that bag. I think it came with like 30 caramels in it. I'm still working on it. It's been two and a half months. Yeah. Well, Because <laughs> I just want one. Every once in a while. Right. And when, like, Kirby, she's, I mean, she still has, she would still, like, we went to the parade in Lindsburg mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Like, she still has her bag of candy mm-hmm. from the parade. And there wasn't that much. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't, like, a gallon Ziploc bag. And, like, her Halloween candy, we're going to end up throwing away most of it. Mm-hmm. Because she won't eat it. Mm-hmm. You know, she's not, she likes sweet things, but she doesn't necessarily, like, that's the thing I've realized is that she wants something sweet after a meal but it could literally be a lollipop. An apple. An apple. Uh, something. Like, she wants something sweet, but, like, she wouldn't even eat a whole piece of pie. hmm Or a whole piece of cake. Or she might eat three or four cookies, like, Oreo cookies, if that's what we were having. But, like, she barely will eat one chocolate chip cookie. You know? And so, like, she loves chocolate, so, like, you can give her a handful of chocolate chips. And that's just the go-to. Mm-hmm. Like, I am fine with you having dark chocolate chocolate chips. Because she loves them. Mm-hmm. And go for it. Um, 
So some of the other crunchy decisions that we make as a family is you make our hand soap and our dish soap Mm -hmm. and you make our laundry soap and you make some lotions and you make your own beard oil. Mm -hmm. So like when it comes to that kind of stuff, like the stuff that goes on our body, right? why do you choose to do that? Yeah. Fragrances. Because by regulation standpoint, like they don't have to tell you what's in perfume. They literally would just put on their perfume. Mm-hmm. There could be or mil- fragrance. Right, millions of chemicals mm-hmm. in to make up a perfume. You know, there's just there's this vast number of of things and chemical combinations that that make up perfume. And it's just like a slap it on there and well, we label it. It's like, yeah, it's like carb. You, yeah, you did not. Okay, what do kind anything. of carb? Right, and so I notice that like skin irritations and breakouts and like rash, eczema type things just have gone away by just switching from basically Tide Pods to making my own. Our own soap. Is it the prettiest and most convenient? Nope. Am I working on it? Like, yeah, we'll we'll eventually get there. But like, it's it is not difficult, and it is. What's how many ingredients? Uh, four. Yeah, four if you count the essential oil. You know, but other than that, yeah, it's three basically three active ingredients. And, and you don't typically put the essential oil in the liquid detergent. You put it on the wool ball for the dry cycle. Correct. So you could change the scent right. every cycle mm-hmm. or every season or yeah, well, you know, like, as often as you want. Yeah, I, and I, because I like our bedding to be one. So like if I know that we're washing our comforter and our sheets and stuff, I will use maybe more of like the lavendery type bergamot um, calming scents. And then like on our clothes, like I may use more of the... Uh, sweet tree, orange or the tea tree or you know during the summer using lemons and citruses uh scents but but i noticed even just for me like on the middle of my back between my shoulder blades used to just always stay so itchy mm-hmm. like i would wear down the corners of the door jams scratching my back like a bear and i barely ever do that now mm-hmm. and the only thing is just again by process of elimination was the fragrance and the dye in the clothing detergent, you know, and um, and I've gone as far as like I've made dishwasher detergent, but that one I haven't like stuck with, so I still use store bought uh, soap, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, like, the laundry When you soap. even use, like, the soap that I made. Yeah, goat milk soap. Yeah, goat milk and donkey milk and yeah, I all will, that I refuse, for his body wash. Yeah, I do not use any commercial soaps. I will not use any shampoos that are commercial. So I actually have the stuff now. I think I have all my ingredients for making shampoo and conditioner. Um, Which he uses on his beard. I know there's going to be some people that are like, why do you even need shampoo? Well, I, I'm doing it for Kirby more than anybody. <laughs> yeah. And eventually I'll get you on board, but you're a lot harder to like wean off of that stuff. I, well, and I just have like the weirdest hair. Like I have to use deep clean because as I've gotten older, my hair gets oilier faster. And so like I don't use any conditioner ever. And anything that's like hydrating or like anything like that just... It won't wash out of my hair, yeah. and so it makes my hair look like it's dirty, right. even though it's clean. I will get you to try the natural shampoo because, and I don't know if it'll work or not, but also it's like giving it more than one rock, one wash. Like, use this for two weeks. Yeah. Use it for two weeks, and if it sucks for your hair, then don't use it. But we need to try it and see because... You know, I know that hair falling out is natural, mm-hmm. but I do not know how you still have hair on your head. <laughs> yeah, I shed like a like a dog. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy, and I know that that's a fairly normal thing. But like, is that normal? Because everybody's using highly chemically processed shampoos, and like, hmm. What well, was worse? There was a time that I used Pantene, and mm-hmm. it was much worse. Right. And then come to find out, Pantene also sells sells hair growth. 
well, products. Was, yeah. So I'm of... like, oh, okay, so your your product destroys my hair growth, and then you sell a hair growth product. Right. That's How a perfect convenient. Stuff. Yeah. You know, and so like I don't use any Pantene products anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm I haven't moved over to a natural shampoo yet, but that's just because. I'm a little obstinate. Yeah, you haven't made it for me, and I'm a little obstinate because I don't like my hair looking greasy. Yeah. Of course, I also wear hats 90% of the time, so I could try a natural product, and if it didn't work, as long as the bottoms yeah. of my hair looked clean, I could try it for two weeks and then tell you, like, I don't like it. My hair, I've not been able to take off yeah. a hat in two weeks. Well, I, what's, what's fascinated me as I've gotten older and, you know, started – paying more attention to these things is realizing how much of our daily lives that things have been, we've been inundated with that mean nothing. Like the foaming of your shampoo, the foaming of your toothpaste, like the mintiness of your toothpaste. The mintiness is only there so you feel like you're clean. And the psychology behind that is that you will feel dirty when you don't taste minty. That's why they all taste like mint. That's why they all have that like burning sensation because then once that burn is gone or once that taste and that foaminess of the tingling of your toothpaste or mouthwash is gone, your mouth feels dirty. Therefore, you instinctively want to brush your teeth more. And and that's just the thing is it's like soap does not have to be lathery, foamy stuff. They do that so that way you can see it. And you can see it like being washed off and it gives you like, it's just, it's all psychological and how much of the things in our daily lives is a hundred percent just psychological because 50 years ago, there was a really good sales guy who partnered up or was also a really good psychologist and just knew human behavior and studied it. And now millions of people feel that if they don't have blank in their product that it's not working um you know and so but yeah i mean there's a lot of those things and just again time tells information Mm -hmm. and you know like fluoride and toothpaste and those certain things it's like yeah i like the fact that it helps you know with anti-cavity but i don't like what it does to my gut you know and so don't you know, make other adjustments. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's our big thing. And then just getting away from any kind of, I think, synthetics. Like, I don't wear colognes anymore. Um, I mean, it's not that I, I still have some because, you know, yeah, maybe if we're going on a date night or we're going to go do this, like, I can. But if I just sprayed it on me all the time like I used to or whatever, every time we left the house, like, I just had headaches all the time. Mm-hmm. And burning cheap soy candle uh, or paraffin candles and stuff, like just instant headaches. And I can walk into someone's house and if they have 37 of those Glade wallflower plug-in whatever things, like not every single time, but more often than not, like I'm probably going to leave that house with a headache. And that's okay. Like if that's Do you think that some of that, though, is psychological? Is psychological? Just like the bubbling of the shampoo? I think there might be more instinctive now, but used to. I mean, you can attest to this because we had those things. Sure. We didn't know why it was. The headaches sure. were real. No, and I understand because you did every 45 days, like almost to the dot, it was migraine. Yeah. And you'd have a migraine, wow. you'd have small headaches, and right. then migraine, and then small headaches. Yeah. And so there was like four days and it was every 45 days, almost literally to the dot. Cause I finally started tracking him cause you were like, no, I'm fine. I was like, this is not normal. Like you, sh- this isn't how you should have to live your life. Yeah. And so we started tracking it and yeah, we started cutting those things out and you haven't had one. And I don't even know. We stopped tracking because they stopped happening as frequently, right. but there's sometimes I feel like you could have walked into a house and if you'd never known there was glade wallflowers, you wouldn't have a headache. But as soon as you do know that they're there, then you start getting a headache. Well, see, and the thing is, is that I don't look at it like that because I can smell it. I don't need to see them. I can walk in. And like I said, some of them aren't as bad as Okay, others. so let's, let's say candles. Uh-huh. If you walked in 
and you smelled candles burning. Mm-hmm. If no, somebody not... told you they were paraffin, no, I I feel like you would start getting symptoms of a headache. And then if they came back later and said, "Oh no, I'm sorry, they're soy." No, I don't think that because I can go into some places like the bookstore, like they're burning candles. I think it's also a proximity thing. So how how tall are the ceilings? Are you walking in the the mist of the you know, the perfumes or the aromas or is it like just an ambient like there's enough space that it's not as concentrated? But no, I don't think the candle thing is as big a deal because I mean, I've been in places, I mean, even like, you know, the bathroom, like you're burning those cheap candles in the bathroom earlier. Like, it wasn't a headache thing. Like, I don't have a headache or I didn't get a headache smelling them. Gotcha. But, and sometimes it's like, I can, I can smell them. And it's not always like an instant headache. Like, being in one of, you know, the business that I'm in, like, I'm in people's houses. Sometimes it's not a big deal because, like, it might be one or maybe they use a better one or maybe it's the scent because... Whatever's in the yeah, perfume. Yeah, I can understand the actual scent because, like, pine yeah. perfumes give me a headache. Pine right. trees, not not every time, but sometimes even still sure. pine trees. Um, the sweet pea, I have never been able oh, to no. stand the sweet pea. Yeah. It gives me instant headache. Yeah. And, I mean, when that was, like, one of their signature scents, I couldn't even go into the Bath and Beyond. Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body Works. Because it was, like, their scent. Right. And so I, I couldn't shop yeah. there. Now that it's kind of taken a back seat, as long as I'm just not like sniffing or huffing on those candles, I'm pretty much fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely certain scents right. that give me an immediate. Yeah. Well, I was in a client's house. And I think sometimes it's just irritation. Right. Well, that's what I'm like, saying. Like I don't like, have a headache from sweet pea. I just get instantly irritated. Right. Well, that's the thing is, again, because there's so many chemicals, you don't know that it's Oh, it's Molly polyethylene. Right. Blah, it's blah. my red 40. Like, right. Like, instantly I'm pissed. Right. And so we don't know that that's the chemical, but, like, we just know that there are certain things. Because, like, right. I was in a client's house this week. They had some sort of plug, and I couldn't see it, but they had some sort of artificial fragrance in their house. Didn't bug me at all. It wasn't super strong, but then, like, one of those make-ready homes that we were going into, because there was an odor in there, they plugged in, like, 36. They put two Glade oil diffusing plug-in things in every room to mm-hmm. mat or to kind of start getting the smell out. Right. I was like physically nauseous the entire time I was there, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, I understand, but like, and they just acted like it was nothing and walking through. But again, it's like how things affect different people and just being a little bit more understanding in that, you know, someone else, again, someone else can eat foods and it doesn't make them fat. And some people can, you know, withstand heat or like I can withstand cold a lot better than some people and noises and all those other things just play into it. And so it's like being conscious and just making decisions for yourself. That's like, I am self-aware that those artificial smells get, they they trip me up. Mm -hmm. So I just, we don't do car, car fresheners. We don't do those candles. Like we've switched to incense and even some of the incense, it's like the smell of it. I'm like, not a fan of that Mm -hmm. and uh so i think it's just trial and error and finding what's going to work but you know that's why i'm fixing them i literally just got in yesterday the wicks to make our own candles because like i know we both love burning candles during the winter time Mm -hmm. and during the cooler months and i want to burn candles i love burning candles but not at the expense of my nasal passage (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. and so I bought all the stuff to, you know, the beeswax and the hemp um, wicks and stuff. That's like, we're not burning. You know, I like the wood ones and stuff. But again, those put off smoke Mm -hmm. and stuff. And like, I'm not trying to put that in the house. But, you know, I mean, we run air purifier. We run, um, I run our air system pretty much always just on circulate. So that way it's constantly moving air around. And why when we build our home someday, it's fresh air system is like number one on my list like i will put in i'll paint our own house if it came down to like well you can pay to have all this painting done or you can pay for this like i'll go with that i'll paint you know but i the mechanicals are going to be super important because i mean i look at you know i mean we have people that we know they have allergy congestion issues and then like when they're at our house 
they start going away. Mm -hmm. And they start doing better. Or they can breathe. Or, I mean, even us going from living in our 1920s house to living in a newer house that probably, like, that house probably had mold. Oh, yeah. You know, it was super leaky to the attic and who knows. There's no way it didn't. (laughs) Oh, yeah, no. (laughs) It for sure did. Yeah, and so I think there's just another aspect of just clean air and like I can tell a physical difference when we're somewhere that does not have Mm -hmm. good air quality or if I like we go sleep somewhere that just doesn't have good air quality and stuff and you know well I mean we started using pollen instead of allergy medicine so we've been off allergy medicine for about two years Mm -hmm. and we just do natural pollens um which does it work as good most of the time, yes. Yeah. There's very few days that I'm like, man, this just isn't doing it. Right. And what's nice is you can't overdose on pollen because it's naturally occurring and it's literally about the allergens in the air. So if I have a rougher day, I take more pollen right. and typically that does the trick. Right. Um, but we get it from a local beekeeper. So it's all stuff that is currently affecting us right. in our area and we typically one jar lasts us about six months. Yeah. So once With multiple people using it, you know. So. Yeah. And so I mean, we we purchase it about every six months, and everybody in the house uses it now. And we've had far less allergies with Curb. Yeah. I mean, she used to have she had such bad allergies. At one point, I took her in because I thought she had COVID or the flu or like which COVID is the flu, but right. <laughs> um, that variant I, of the flu. Yeah. I thought that she was like seriously ill, need to be pulled out of school. Turns out, no, it was literally just an allergy attack. Right. And that's when we had her on. Even at that point, we had her on medication. I mean, we we had her on Zyrtec, and then every 30 days, we'd switch her to Allegra. And then we'd switch her to Zyrtec, and then we'd switch her to Allegra. Right. And she was on Flonase, and she still had to take decongestant almost every other night just to sleep. Right. Now she's just on pollen. Right. That's it. And we haven't had anything even remotely close to that. Yeah. And so when she comes back from her mom's, like, we can visibly tell, like, you need pollen ASAP. Right. Like, it's only been a few days since you've gone without it, but, like, you need it now. Right. And so we typically double up the first day that she's back, and then she's back to normal. Right. Um, But pollen's definitely a crunchy thing. Yeah. That we do. Well, and I'm just a firm believer that... And understanding, you know, that people, again, we go through cycles mm-hmm. and those things that were not important, like, like getting good rest, you mm-hmm. know, used to, it was like, oh, I'll just go till I fall and then I'll just wake up and keep going, going, going. Now it's like, no, no, I need my rest. Yeah. You know, I'm not necessarily a big nap person. Um, I wish I was, but. I love a good nap. I am very much a, I need to be in bed at a certain time or it's going to throw my day off. Um. And I think I have a, a, you know, I have decent leeway in that, but, you know, and also just trying to keep some normalcy there. So like I try, I set my alarm every morning for six. doesn't matter what day it is. I get up at six. I, you know, have my little morning, you know, piddle around and then I do my Bible study and I try to spend, you know, 30 minutes doing devotionals and just quiet time. And then, you know, Kirby comes down and then she does hers with me and we kind of hang out before school and, you know, those routines are, are important um, in that cycle of rest and being able to be present. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a form of meditation, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, Introducing Dallary Flow CRM, the game changer in business management. It's the all-in-one platform designed to streamline your operations, boost your sales, and empower your growth with plans as low as just 20 bucks a month. With Dallary Flow, you can seamlessly manage your leads, automate communication, nurture your customer relationships, and optimize your workflows. No more juggling between multiple tools. Dallary Flow brings everything under one roof, making your business more efficient and your life simpler. Join the Dallary Flow community and experience the future of CRM. Get ready to supercharge your business and unlock your full potential with Dallary Flow CRM. For more information, there's a link below this episode. But, but yeah, I mean, and, and I try to switch out, you know, our, yeah, I mean, anything that I can switch out chemically for something different. I mean, I'm, I'm trying different things with, um, you know, room sprays, mm-hmm. you know, 
see some, you know, some Asian people that were talking about something that they do in their culture, which is, you know, soaking cinnamon sticks in mm. vinegar. And it's different. And what's funny is, like, I think it smells good because to me it smells like apple pie. But it's funny because not everybody gets that. And I think that obviously people are different, but also because it's not culturally what we do. And that's just not something that it's like, it's just not normal. Like you need to get Febreze and you need to just like basically gas your family, you know? And I'm just like realizing and doing a little bit and do your own research, you know? I mean, no, I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to say that this is what you should be doing. This is not advice per se. It's just, Mm -hmm. this is our experience. But, you know, like I bought those uh, rugs and they weren't terribly, but I mean, you know, I, I shampooed them and I do use a chemical for that, you know, just shampoo carpet solution in our machine. But then instead of using more chemicals on these wool rugs to do, um, to get rid of any odors that were lingering, you know, I, uh, after shampooing them, I let them dry for a while and then I just cover them in baking soda and then you know kind of like let that work in a little bit and leave it for a day and i mean it's typically you know it's a three day four day process to clean these rugs but anyway then i do that and i let it sit for 24 hours vacuum all that up but then i come in there with that vinegar and cinnamon concoction and spray them down and then let them sit for another 24 hours and then then they're good to go Mm -hmm. you know but it's like then we're not taking these chemically pumped, you know, fragrance filled. That's just masking the the scent, right? Um, and putting it in our kids' rooms, you know. And to me, that's just important. And it, it you know, my growing up, I mean, we just we ate from we grew our own food. We did a lot of those things, and so it seems more natural to me because I remember mom making some things like I don't know I don't recall if she ever made laundry soap or hand soap and stuff but there was just a lot of things that she's like no we just make it Mm -hmm. you know um she didn't buy a lot of like we never had freezer meals growing up um that I can recall anyway and so I think getting back into the habit of like like I don't buy I try not to buy like the breakfast sandwiches I would rather make English muffins from scratch do all that like it 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 takes an hour or two, you know, um, and then freeze them and try it. And then like, I'm going to try doing like some breakfast burritos. And so it's not that it's not like a calorie thing or it's not a, well, those frozen Jimmy Dean sandwiches are garbage. It's like, I'm not saying that, but if you look at what I put in to making something that was super easy and very sustainable and, you know, it's not, Something that's like, well, it it takes so much time and money. It costs less to make the sandwiches than it did to go buy them. But, like, you look at the ingredient list even on how they make those things shelf-stable for months on end. Mm -hmm. You know, there's 82 ingredients between the croissant or whatever the bread is and then, you know, the meat which has all this other stuff in there. And then there's the Right. Well, because they have to preserve every individual ingredient. Right. And so you have all that stuff, and then it's like you look at what we did, and it was like eggs, ham, so salt and water and pork, egg. Um, I used a uh, like a Tillamook cheddar cheese, just a straight up cheddar, and um, and then the English muffins. You know, it's literally just flour, water, yeast, a little bit of pinch of sugar and salt, and oil. I think. Yeah, and I and olive oil, and then, um, and then just made the the sandwiches. So like literally ten ingredients between, and that's including salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just put some sriracha on it. And, but, but yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the avenue that I'm trying to go down. Is I'll try to make the food and freeze it or whatnot, so that way you can have frozen meals, or that way we can have those things that are cost effective but also just like 
this is well for me it's just convenience like when it comes to during the week if i can't microwave it i'm just probably not having lunch yeah and so it's healthier for me to have microwave options than just skip a meal right and i'm not gonna like i might get up and make a taco (laughs) (laughs) but like outside of that like if it's if i can't microwave it to fix it i'm just not gonna eat anything i'll have like peanuts or something like that right so yeah i need microwave meals just to make sure that i actually eat eat yeah yeah but yeah i think i think that and like i said and then the seed oils you know not using those like i mean i we've i keep vegetable oil on hand for those rare occasions but like used to i would go through quite a bit and now it's you know that one bottle i buy the small little bottle of vegetable oil and I will use that for frying if I was to fry something. But outside of that, it's like maybe if I'm making a cake, will I use a little bit of that? But outside of that, if it's anything else, breads, mm-hmm. most desserts, I mean pretty much anything. Like we go through a lot of olive oil. And I, you know, I get cold pressed, the real deal. Like it's more expensive and you got to be more thoughtful with it. But that's all we use now. I don't do avocado oil because you're allergies. But... Mm-hmm. I don't do grapeseed oil or canola oil or any of those seed oils because they just, they're horrible inflammatories. Yeah. So. And then I I think I'm probably less crunchy than you. Like, I don't mind when you switch things up, really. Like, it doesn't, I don't really care either way. Right. Um, But I'm definitely crunchy when it comes to bath time. Like, my baths, I swear by them. They will fix anything. Yeah. Um, Because, like, I have ADHD and OCD. I don't take medication for them. I struggle with anxiety and depression for probably most of my life, at least since I was 16. And, you know, when when I was in sports, that kind of was the outlet. But when sports was no longer an option just because of injuries and, you know, I'm old now. And I've already got arthritis because of the sports then the bath was kind of like the replacement for me. Um, And so, but I mean, it's got hydrogen peroxide. I used to grow our own herbs. Now I'm using a lot of essential oils because it's winter and we don't have a garden at the new house. Um, So I'll probably grow some peppermint and some rosemary and stuff like that. Uh, But for now, it's just essential oils. I use a lot of natural oils, um, castor oil, vitamin E, um, Epsom salt, baking powder, borax, hydrogen peroxide, milk powder, milk powder. If I want my, the only thing milk powder does is it makes your skin softer. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I take two to three baths every single week, but anytime that like the nieces come over and they're feeling sick or icky at all, I give them a bath and most of the time they wake up the next day, no more fever. They don't feel sick at all. They're back to their normal selves. Um, or I mean, even today, like nieces came over and, you know, she was like, sorry, she's a little gassy. I'm like, yeah, we can fix that. So I just gave all three of the kids baths and she was not once gassy or had issues. She ate all her lunch, like no issues whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I'm like, here, drink this, you know, peppermint or drink this lemongrass. We use lemongrass on the yard to keep the mosquitoes away. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think my bath time is probably where I'm crunchiest. Yeah. And then when it comes to gardening and herbs, like yeah. all the different ways that you can use herbs and the natural way to keep bugs and predators away. Um, and it's not even that I'm adverse to the chemicals necessarily. Like, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I just think it's cool that these things are naturally like God already gave us the solution why are we trying to overcomplicate it? Right. So it's not like I'm like, oh, chemicals, er, you know, like they cause cancer, la la. Like I'm not, I'm not crunchy in that sense, but I'm just like, why, why overcomplicate the process? Yeah. You know, like they, they literally used to cure and treat cancer with hydrogen peroxide baths. So why would I not put hydrogen peroxide in my bath? Right. Like it, it helps your white blood cells fight off viruses because it, increases the oxygen right. because it's double oxygen you know and so like why i i mean i don't get sick 
And it, even during COVID, I'm, I was a non-masker. I'm like, that's going to piss half the people off. But like, I didn't mask. I went out. I lived my normal life. I did not change the way that I lived whatsoever. You got COVID. I slept in the same bed as you. Mm -hmm. I had several other people around me get COVID. I never once got COVID. Yeah. And I mean, I would literally intentionally eat after you. Right. Just to try and let's just get it over with. Right. You know, like, let's get this flu thing out of the way. I don't take flu shots. I don't do immunizations. And I have not been sick since I was basically nine. Right. Outside of like, you know, that time of the month. Right. <laughs> but I just, and it's not because I'm particularly a healthy person. Well, no, I think a lot of that has to do also just with your genetics. Yeah. Because some people, you know, they are going to be more susceptible because of their... Sure. You know what, and and too, I mean, you know, I think we're both learning more and more. Like I've, I've been doing a lot more research these last two years, on, you know, just how the human body kind of works and how mm -hmm. it talks to each other, and I think you're getting more and more, have an ear to it, like with gut health, and stuff, and realizing like how much of your body is affected by that, and. And so, I mean, you know, I mean, it just may be that you've always had really good gut health for some mm -hmm. reason. You've always had good levels of chemical balance and stuff. And so you haven't had a lot of that stuff because you've had a healthy gut. You know, you don't really eat a lot of different. When working in the insurance space, I, like my pulpo was in insurance as well. So I, I kind of got to see it from, you know, even a younger age, but I refuse to be medication dependent. Yeah. And so for me, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not interested in something that takes away my ADHD. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly feel like it's one of my superpowers, especially when you combine it with the OCD. Like, I, I think that it gives me the ability to do some things that other people wouldn't just naturally be able to do. Sure. But it's a gift. Sure. And so if I mute it with medication, then... I, I can't function the way that I'm supposed that I was designed, literally designed to function. And now obviously there's people with severe ADHD, but I do think that there's some natural ways to kind of curb that. Yeah. And if medication is the only way, that's fine, but what's the smallest dose of medication that you could possibly take while using some natural remedies? And so for me, the bath is what helps me slow down my brain without medically inducing a coma-like state for my brain. And with what I do in the creative spaces of our businesses, I can't mute that part of my brain. I need it firing fast. I need solutions fast. But at the end of the day, I need my brain to slow down so that I can sleep. Or I need to be able... That's probably why I read better in a bath. Because I've got the right essential oils firing off the right things in my brain, telling my brain to slow down, telling my body, hey, body, hey, we need to get rid of these viruses. Hey, it just signals the inside of me to operate properly without having to medication induce things to operate properly. Yeah. Well, and on that also, you know, it's like... Um, you know, if you, if you have something severe like that and you do feel like it needs to be medicated, it's like, that's okay if you're using that to then learn how to regulate naturally mm -hmm. and not like, oh, I'm just going to be able to take a pill or a shot and then that's just going to cure me and stuff. It's like, right. no, 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 that's just going to make you dependent on something else. Right. Um, well, that's like, I mean, I've got, I've got nerve damage because of the spinal injury in cheer and... I just kept cheering through it. So now I've got nerves that have redirected themselves in ways that they're not supposed to be. And so that causes pinched nerves and, you know, my hands and feet go numb at random points and things like that. And I've, I've pretty consistently had severe pain, severe back pain from the age of 17, really after I had my son. So at 18 through, I mean, even when we met. I, I would have days that I was literally just down for the count, mm -hmm. especially during that time of the month. I could not get out of bed for two days. I was yeah. in so much pain. And now I still have pain, but it's not debilitating. 
There's not been a day in the last two years since I've started regularly focusing on my baths and what I put in them. I've not been down for the count for two years because of back pain. And there's still nights that like I have a pinched nerve and so I'll scratch really hard or like I I toss and turn a lot. But it's not, I mean, I would literally have sores on my legs from scratching so hard. Right. And that's just not something that happens anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she gets a lot done sometimes. Like if she can get on a project when it's that time of the month, I think you'll just try to work through it Mm -hmm. because it's a lot better just to stay active than if you lay there or you try to rest. But because instead it's like half the time when those things, I say half the time, there have been times when it's like, why are you outside gardening, hauling these heavy rocks around or doing this or doing that while this is going on? Like, isn't this supposed to be a painful time? Yeah. And it's like, well, if I just induce pain over here. If I'm already in pain, (laughs) then I might as well just do this because like, yeah, I don't want to add an extra day of pain. I'm already in pain. Let me just get done this thing that I already know is going to hurt me because I'm already hurting. Right. (laughs) <laughs> which is yeah. probably not the wisest, but <laughs> but that that's where my crunchiness comes out. I, yeah. I honestly, I don't think there's anything that I probably, like health-wise, couldn't help with one of my baths. If I was given the right ingredients, I think there's, I don't think there's really anything health-wise yeah. that a bath couldn't help. Yeah. Well, I, I think one thing that you said that kind of, uh, a thought that I had was, again, going back to studies from psycho- psychologists and stuff where with human behavior and environmental behavior and when you said that you read better in the bath because you think you know you it calms you down mm-hmm. to a point where um your your brain can focus mm-hmm. and it's not running a thousand miles an hour and the next thing that I'm going to try to do, but it's going to be very difficult and it's going to take a while because it's I've been working on it, is getting electronics out of the bedroom. Like completely no electronics, no phones charging next to the bed, no TVs on, none of those things. And the reason is because of... Of ours? Of, or the kids? Of ours. Like if you can, if you're watching this and you can see her face right now, the thought of not having a TV on at night is like it, it, she's, is she's getting our, anxiety right now. Yeah, this is where our crunchiness disagrees. Right, but the amount of signals and the amount of waves that come off of like our phones just sitting there, um, how that affects sleeping and your brain being able to shut down and heal itself while it's sleeping. Um, but my point to all that is uh, having spaces that are for things. And by that I mean, like, for me, I do not read well in bed. Because to me, the bed is a place to sleep. So whenever I get in bed, it's sleepy time. You know, it's not, I'm going to lay in bed and do a puzzle. Or I'm going to lay in bed and watch a movie. Or I'm going to lay in bed and read a book. Nope. I'm going to lay in bed and I'm going to sleep. Um, And I think that it's important to have places that you do stuff. So having a place to like, like, you know, Craig was talking about one of the sermons talking about this. You have a place that you do your devotional or you have a chair that you read in or like Maxwell. He has a chair that is his idea chair. And this is where he sits and comes up with ideas or he does blank. And I think that by creating those kinds of spaces and learning how to use them and how those things affect you is going to help you in your anxiety or in your development. Because, you know, if like eating, you know, if you always eat in front of the TV, like the living room is the dining room and there isn't like a form of community. And, you know, there's just all these things that I, I don't think that we realize affect our day-to-day lives and like how we interact with different spaces, how we interact with each other in those spaces. Um, and so there's just, there's a lot of stuff and I'm finding it very interesting. The more research or the more reading I do about those kinds of things. Hmm. 
And so, anyway, it's just fascinating to me that just how powerful the human brain is Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's, you know, it it will tell you what it needs. And it can either need silence or it can need stimulation or it can need these things. But how we also get to the point where we numb it to the point where then it, it can no longer communicate with us and tell us what what it needs, you know. And I think that's the other thing that really just kind of clicked with me yesterday when we were talking with a potential client and their business is essential oils. And to me, it was always like portrayed. And I think, again, this is just where the the marketing geniuses at like the cigarette companies or the big pharma companies that haven't gotten into the essential oil space because there's not as much money in it but the branding and the education behind it is not as prevalent because i was always kind of under the assumption i guess that it was more about what was in the oil that is going to heal you instead having that realization that's like no it's about the scent that the oil gives off that triggers the electrons in your brain and your body that says hey we need to heal this cell right or and and it's about triggering and turning on or turning off those molecules and those electrons and those sensors in your body that that's all it is. This is a message. Right. That it's not what's inside of it necessarily. I mean, the quality, obviously, yes. But it's more about the scent or the things that it communicates. It's a vessel right. of communication. And that, to me, was such a realization. It's like, oh, it's not about. Yeah. Instead of using Bengay, you could use the right kind of peppermint right. essential oil. and. The peppermint in the Bengay is the only thing that's actually loosening your muscles. The rest of it is just a preservative. Right. And so knowing that now and just like... Or even just taking a literal peppermint leaf and rubbing it on a sore spot (laughs) is doing the exact same thing as Bengay. Yeah. And I mean, she had that one. I don't even remember what it was called, but you know, it's like you rub it on your hand. She's like, here, take this. And she rubbed it on our palms. Rub your hands together for a second and then just cup your face and inhale deeply like, I don't know about you, but I just felt like my airways opened up. Yeah. Like, it was just stimulated, and it just grew by twice. I could just breathe, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just like, oh, my word. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, anyway, so those kinds of things to me is very eye-opening, and now it's like, oh, it doesn't seem like such, you know, hogwash that's like, okay, you're over here with your frankincense. Right. You know, and now it's like, okay, so this is just a, it's like a wire, and if you don't press the key on your keyboard, it's not doing anything. Right. But once you press it, it sends a signal to your screen to put this letter on the screen. And that's what essential oils are. Is it's that between A and B, mm-hmm. it's that commu- line of communication and it helps that communication. Yeah, it's just a light switch. There. Right. And so, but like, did you notice last night, like, did you sleep any different that you could tell? Or like, was it, did you have any like weird dreams last night? Did you have any... Did you feel like you slept fairly good or... Yeah, I felt like I slept good. Because, like, I put that magnesium spray that I made Mm -hmm. on your feet and, like, I... I didn't have the tingling, like, the the nerve tingling. Yeah. So, I've noticed that I made that spray a couple days ago and I've been using it for a couple days and, like, I have not gotten up to go pee. I did. Several times. Sure. But you also sleep with a cup of water right next to the bed and you And I never drink water, so when I do... Yeah. It just like immediately comes out. Well, and you you always you don't drink water during the day, but you'll drink a thirty ounce cup right before bed, mm-hmm. and then I wake up in the morning and you've gone to the bathroom like three times. Mm-hmm. But like I try not to drink anything an hour before bed um, to help not have to get up and go to the bathroom. Um, but I've just noticed like I don't recall ever waking up or anything these last couple nights. With using that because your feet have the biggest pores. And then when you have that. Well, magnesium just absorbs better when you soak in it or put it on your skin versus right. ingesting it. Right. So. But because your feet have bigger pores, mm-hmm. that's a good constant. Like square inch for square inch, your feet have the biggest and most pores 
to absorb it. So if you're, you know, if you're not going to bathe in it, mm-hmm. you can literally just make a magnesium chloride spray, spray it on your feet and kind of, you know, rub it in, let them sit there for a second. And it's going to absorb right into your bloodstream a lot quicker than if you were like, you know, just put it on your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm interested and I'm going to start using it because I wanted to try it for a little bit before I started using it on the kids. But um, when Kirby comes back Monday, I'm going to start doing that at bedtime just to see if that helps with, you know, 30 minutes before bedtime, hit them with the spray mm-hmm. and just see if that will start calming you know, the, the pre-bed jitters and the wanting to ask 30 questions and not wanting to go to sleep. Yeah. So if you'd like some of our crunchy recipes, yeah. hop on our website and shoot us a message and yeah. we'll send you some of our crunchy recipes. Yeah, I'm thinking I might end up, I know I'm going to do this for the guys for Christmas. Um, I'm going to make, because all my brothers have, and my dad have beards, so I'm going to make... Um, beard oil for Christmas, but I was sitting there thinking about it and I was looking at the supplies and, you know, sometimes it's best to make a certain batch because of being able to mix everything appropriately and actually measure everything out. So in order for me to make the batch that I want to make, it's probably going to make more like 30 or 40 bottles of oil and I only need five. So... I'm thinking instead of just making the five, I'm thinking about getting the stuff to make the full batch and then doing like a limited run on there. So we may list that on our Facebook page or something for those that are in the area who... Yeah, so follow us on Facebook too. Yeah, want to pick up a a thing of homemade beard oil and then you can have this. <laughs> but... Good chatting. You too. See you on the next time. Bye. Crunch. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to the Velvet Ventures. If you'd like more information about who we are, what we do, or you want to follow us or any of our companies, then feel free to check out the link below. Other than that, thank you so much to our sponsors for making this episode possible. See you next time.